At what areas do you feel are the team's strongest points? Well, I think we're one of the best shooting teams in the league, and um, we're really quick, and our zone offense, is, our zone defense is really tough, and uh, I think shooting is our strongest point, and I've, well, that's it. Thank you, Mike Mahoney. And now we're here with Ron White, the starting center for the Panthers. Ron, after suffering from a broken ankle over the summer, will it affect your performance this season? Well, I don't think it will affect my performance this season. It really affected me during the summer when I was out for eight weeks. I really didn't get to practice on my fundamentals, which I'd really like to. But it just makes me want to practice harder and harder in practice so I become better. But over the season, I don't think it should affect me. How effective do you feel the team will be this year? I think we're going to be real effective because we're going to be fast-breaking this year and it's going to be really exciting. And we have a lot of good players with good attitudes on the team and we really work well together. How sure are you of, are you of defeating Pittsburgh High School this season? Well, I'm real sure we're going to defeat Pitt this year twice because we've seen them play and the coaches have scouted them and they're not very good this year and we feel we can beat them twice this year. Thank you, Ron White, and good luck with the upcoming season. Hello, I'm Dana Neal, and I'm here with our student of the week, Pat Kongchanko. Welcome to our show, Pat. I'm glad to be here. Pat has just recently moved to Ania from Thailand. How long have you been in this country? Almost two years now. Did you know any English before you moved to this country? Yes, we learned it in kindergarten. We have seven subjects a day, and every day we have two hours English. It must have been a big change for you moving from your country to America. What would you say was the biggest shock of the move? The biggest shock was I know only one week that we were moving. When I get here, I got sick. Everybody talked different and looked differently. Well, now that you've lived here for two years, how do you like it? I like it in many ways. Uh, just like in school, students here can talk an opinion to the teacher. But in Thailand, the, t the students just sit still and listen to the teacher. That sounds very strict. Pat has a very unique hobby we wanted to share with you. Would you tell us what your hobby is, Pat? Yes, I can make silk flowers. Uh, this one is a Japanese flower named Sagura. It's made from silk material, cotton, and wine. Well, how do you make them, and how long did it take you to make them? It took me about three hours to make them. And I, I bring some example here. This rose, it e it's easy to make, and uh, and... A lot of people like to buy it. Uh -huh. This one, Iris, is pretty. And these two are my mother's favorite, the orchid. Could you show us how to make one? Yes. Uh, I'm going to make this kind of, uh, this kind of flowers. This orchid, uh, it brings some here. We, uh, we use the cotton and the wise together. and. Uh, paint, uh, paint the cover on it, on the cotton, so so it, so it look like a this thing here. Okay. And we use this to make, and this for the we use five day to uh, to make one flower and. So you make it like this and and use the wise wrap around this thing. When we finish it's, it's it's going to be like this and then we make about five or six of this and it's go together so it'd be one flower, one single flower. Well thank you very much for sharing your hobby with us today, Pat. It's very beautiful and you're very talented. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Feedback, where we ask the questions and you give the answers. On campus today, we will be asking Antioch High School students, what does Christmas mean to you? Peace out, Earth, and goodwill to all mankind. Thank you. It means being with my family and Christmas trees and sitting on Santa Claus's lap. <laughs> being with my family and, and getting presents and, I don't know, just being with my relatives. Being without school. <laughs> and being with all my relatives. Uh, getting together with the family, uh, 
nice big meal with all the relatives around and lots of presents and money and all that. Um, getting together, presents, getting out of school, and eating. <laughs> it means being with your family and <clears throat> celebrating a big happy feeling and visiting your relatives and being with your friends. It means that you get to be together with all your family and relatives. Well, it means everybody being together, being happy, and, and rejoicing Christmas. Uh, Christmas means to me uh, sharing love and a special feeling with um, special people, loved ones, and good friends. And to me, it's a special um, thing in the air that I wish would last all year long. Gee, it's almost Christmas, and nobody has bought us yet. Don't worry, they will, or I'll put a bite on them. Now you don't have to do that. They'll buy us because we're so cute. Yeah, and we're cheap, too. They'll buy me because I'm so huggable. Well, I don't know about you, but if they don't buy me, that'd be simply un-American. All right, everybody, hush up. Stop being so selfish. People will buy us because we're cute. We don't cost a lot. And we're being sold for a good cause, the Theatrical Arts Department of Antioch High School. You're right. We shouldn't be selfish. After all, it is the Christmas season, and we should love everybody. You're right, Bruno. We should love everybody. Come on, let's wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Today on Where Are They Now, we're watching graduate of Antioch High School, Brenda Buford, Oakland Raider It. Brenda is nice enough to come to Antioch High and teach the acting students one of her many routines. what she's really like. Brenda, how long have you been a Raiderette? I've been a Raiderette for two years. Is it really as fun to be a Raiderette as it seems? Um, it's a lot of fun and it entails a lot of hard work and, uh, and a lot of time, but um, it, overall it's, it's a lot of fun. It must be hard work being a Raiderette. Is, how long does it take to work out a routine it, to get it down? Well, um, a lot of the girls have been there for years, so um, myself, being my second year, some of the routines would only take us like a couple practices to, um, to, to get them back going again, and we just repeat the same routine that we did the year before. But for the new girls, it would take maybe two to three weeks. And we practice on, on Monday, Wednesday nights, and then all day Saturday. Hmm. What do the tryouts consist of? The tryouts... Um, they're held once a year, and they consist of first an interview. Uh, the interview consists of just saying, you know, like your height, your weight, your hair color, and your eye color, and then that's it. And there's uh, like two to three hundred girls that show up, and they're usually picking like to seventeen to twenty-two girls. It's quite a competition, then. Yes, yeah. there. They pick maybe like uh, fifty to a hundred girls, depending on how many they're going to choose, and then they come back and. Um, perform a routine a couple days later from the interview. Oh, do most of the Raiderettes hold down a full-time job? Um, I'd say three-quarters of them do. Um, they hold down eight to five Monday through Friday jobs because that's when our practice uh, revolve around that. Um, the other girls are students and you have to be a uh, full-time student or working a full-time job to be a Raiderette. Hmm. Well, working in the public spotlight, you must get a chance to meet a lot of new people or you met any interesting people? Yes, I have. Um, I was really lucky. My first year of being a Raiderette, we made it to the Super Bowl. So 
um, going to the uh, post game party and, and stuff. There was a lot of a lot movie of... stars and mm -hmm. things, you know, neat people, a lot of a lot of wealthy people that I've met. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. It's very interesting. I've met um, a lot of different people. I might say, you know. Mm. Well, what activities were you involved in in high school? In high school, I wasn't really involved in, in that much. I was involved a little bit in drama, and I also taught um, dancing in PE classes. Um, I was a, my senior class secretary, which was a lot of fun. Got yeah. me out of a lot of classes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Brenda's graduation picture. She graduated in 1978, is that right? right? Yes. Okay. So what was, what's your favorite memory from high school? Well, um, I, liked, I liked a lot of being around a lot of my friends, and I had a, a great time, like, in a lot of classes I, that I had. And, and in drama, we had this little improv team <laughs> yeah. that we performed. We did these little um, acts, and we went to, like, the mall and, you know, performed in front of a bunch of people. We just had mostly just a lot of fun, yeah, I mean, and I think that's what like I miss. It because I'm not around a lot of my friends anymore. They're all getting married or having kids and, yeah. and stuff. I understand you're also a professional model, too. Do you happen to have a portfolio? I know you do. <laughs> Can we see some <laughs> pictures? Sure. Okay. Yeah. What are your future career plans? Well, right now, um, I'm a respiratory therapist, and I plan to further that in some kind of medical field, because I really enjoy the medical field. And I'd also like to pursue my modeling career. Um, I'd like to move to L.A. to pursue it, but right now I'm sort of stuck here for a while. So I'm trying to just do as well as I can here in San Francisco, and then maybe move to L.A. someday in the, next, in the near future. Yeah. Well, Brenda, thank you for your time and your sharing your time and talent with us, and good luck in your career. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you here. Hi there. This is your roving consumer, Ed Harper. And I'm here today at Antioch Schwinn City, coming to you this week with some tips on buying bicycles. Many parents want to buy their kids bicycles this holiday season, but just aren't sure of what kind to get. There's 10 speeds, cruisers, BMX, and the list goes on and on. And here with me today is, to clear some of that confusion away, is Mike Carey, owner of this shop. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Ed. So, Mike, what would, what would you suggest parents look for when they come into your shop looking for a bike for their son or daughter? Well, first of all, Ed, when people go out shopping for Christmas bikes, which usually bicycles are one of the biggest uh, items for Christmas presents and so forth, the, uh, the price of bikes sometimes sort of give you a little bit of a shock. So you want to, at the price of the way things are going today, you want to make sure you get a bike that's a good quality so you get a good buy for the amount of money you're going to spend. Now, here we have a typical bike that's a, a good quality BMX bike, something that once you purchase it, it's going to be a bike that's going to hold up for years. You're not going to have any problems uh, with various things going wrong like you would on another kind of a bike. A typical BMX bike has a... Uh, pretty rough life. Uh, jumping and going off ramps and uh, when you get into racing these bikes take a lot of thrashing, a lot of banging around so you have to be sure that you get a bike that's uh, good frame construction especially. Now when you go to buy a bike you want to look carefully at the uh, wells like and especially in these two points right here because as the front wheel comes and bangs down on an, off a jump uh, an awful lot of stress right here on these two uh, joints and also the joints right here. Uh, so anyway check the the construction of the frame, be sure that you can tell by looking at it, it has good heavy wells on it and uh, that there's not any kind of a sloppy finish on it. You can pretty well tell what a good bike is compared to one that is not so good. Uh, other kind of features on a BMX bike, you'll find like the cranks. Uh, a good BMX bike will have chromoly cranks rather than steel. Being chromoly is a little bit lighter than steel, but yet at the same time it's much stronger. And you'll find also chromoly forks. Uh, and handbrakes are real popular for uh, BMX bikes, especially if when the kids that are racing don't want to accidentally step on the brake and slow them down and race. So to use handbrakes allows you to go into the curves under full power and you can put the brake on at the same time. But uh, you want to have a good, just the clean lines of the bike. It should look good and uh, have the features on it so everything is convenient, like the brake levers 
should be where they're easy to reach and uh, good grips. Uh, grips are pretty important on a bike because if your hand slips off uh, and you do an endo, that's not going to be too good. So uh, also check the spoking pattern on a bike. You'll find a lot of different uh, spoking patterns on BMX bikes, but any a good bike shop is going to deal only with a wheel that's built with like a four cross type of spoke, so it's to be a especially strong wheel to take for the, the kind of abuse that BMX bikes will have. And uh, that's just about the types of things to look for. Also, uh, check into the warranties and guarantees on uh, BMX bikes, especially uh, important when it comes to a BMX bike. One thing I might add about BMX bikes is that most times, you know, kids outgrow a bike after three or four or five years, but with a BMX bike, a uh, kid at six years old can ride the same bike all the way up to about 18, 19, 20 years old. Then they start getting into the bar, uh, big cruiser type of bike racing. So it's a bike you're going to have for a long time, so you want to get one that's going to hold up and last for a long time. So this is, this is the kind of bike you'd uh, recommend for just about any kid who loves to jump and everything else? Yes, this would be an ideal bike for somebody. It's a good way to get rid of all that excess energy and burn it up. Well, thank you, Mike. This okay. has been a really enlightening day. Thank you, Ed. Well, I hope some of you parents now have a clearer idea on buying bikes for your children this holiday season. And please, as always, you're welcome to come down to the shop and ask any questions you might have about buying bikes. I've been here with Mike Carey, owner of this bike shop. Have a good day. Do you know this man? You should. He's Mr. Juba, a sweet kind-hearted biology teacher loved by the faculty and a real friend to the students. Do you like your biology teacher? Yeah, he's so kind and sweet. Yes, it's nice to everyone. Okay, people, today's the big day. Finals. Now, they give us an hour and a half for finals, but you only get 15 minutes. No, he's crazy. A lunatic. Come on, Aaron. Are you crazy? He's a lunatic. He should be put in one of the rooms with a pad. We don't like you. We don't hurt you. Look at all this work. I'll never see you. Going out on her. One. Going out on her. During the year, he's a sweet, kind, and lovable man. Then when final week comes around, he becomes Mr. Hyde, the meanest, most disgusting man on campus until after final week, then he's back to his original nice guy who loves everyone. We hope you enjoyed our show today, and instead of our regularly scheduled program, Spotlight, we will be presenting a special Christmas program Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, December 16th, 17th, and 18th featuring the musical talents of students in the Antioch School District. We'd also like to take this time to thank Lynn Kidder for her special help with the news, and Ms. Teresa Rossi and Mr. Mark Cheney for their continuing support. And special thanks to Mr. Lanco Gazia for his kind use of his editing equipment. And to all those who helped in making this show, we thank you. Have a nice day, and everyone have a great Christmas vacation.